Hello world, Mike Rackets. And today we will assemble a traffic light or a device for transmitting sound with the help of light. And that's what came of it. Let's listen. And one more track. And so, we pick up an electrical circuit and start assembling. The data transmission device is an ordinary laser modular KY008 modular. The data receiving device is a photoresistor, it is also a KY018. A digital amplifier XS9871 is used to amplify the weak signal and it is loaded onto an 8 ohm 5 watt speaker. You can power it from an external source of 5 volts. An STM32 microcontroller is used to control the laser to which a PWM signal is supplied. The basic idea is to encrypt the desired signal, package it in PWM and send it to the transmitter. The receiver must be a device with a low-pass filter. It converts the wanted signal from the received PWM signal. Next, we amplify and issue to the speaker. Additionally, the work with musical notes is shown. It works through the keyboard. If you press the corresponding key when a signal of a certain note is sent to the laser, Additionally, you will need filtering capacitors for a keyboard. We remove the interference of the keys on each other when pressed. And the capacitor on the power supply for the photoresistor, the speaker will make less noise. To find out how it all works, we turn to programming. We include the necessary header files. A table of notes for two octaves and a table of durations. The keyboard keys are programmed with seven notes from the first octave. Tracks for playback are designed at two dimensional arrays. Each element is the name of a note and its relative duration. Variables for working with the keyboard. Interrupt prototypes. The variables for the generated sinusoid are memory and a number of points. Functions for working with a sine wave. Functions for working with nodes. The switch from the internal clock source to the external crystal resonator. You can configure the PLL modular. Configure internal bus prescalers. We allow the peripherals to be clocked.
we can figure out where port C13 led and the opt relay as push pull. The pin frequency is 2 MHz. The PWM signal to the laser has an alternative push pull mode. It is this signal that powers the laser. Seven lines are used to work with the keyboard. The vertical three lines are alternately powered. The microcontroller pins for them are in push pull mode. The horizontal four lines give signal when the case are pressed or released. We work in the input pull down mode. Setting up a timer. Knowing the frequency of a timer bus and the divider for this bus, you get the clock frequency of the timer. We calculate the internal timer divisor. We get the duration of a single tick. We set the value of a reboot register. Cumulative account. The divisor of the dead time generator is 1. We do not use the event repetition counter. We calculate the duration of a high state. Here it is not used since the duration control is transferred to the DMA module, configuring the PWM channel. A complementary PWM channel is not used, it is output is disabled. We enable the timer output. Allow DMA module requests to the timer. Timer 4 works with a keyboard. It feeds the horizontal lines in turn, configurable in the same way as timer 1. Pay attention to the bus frequency and its divider. Calculates the time of a single tick and the period of the timer. Timer free is needed to delay the PWM signal stop. Operates in a single pulse mode for one second. DMA channel setup, where second DMA channel works with timer one. We indicate the address of a comparison register. We indicate the address of a sine wave buffer. The size will be changed later, it is now zero. The data size for the buffer and timer register are 16 bits. The transfer is looped.
setting up the XTY controller. We indicate the line used. The mode of use is interrupt. We set up the input trigger on the rising and falling edges. We configure the input output pin so that it works with the XTI controller. Adjust all four horizontal lines similar to each other. We enable interrupts for timers 1 and 4, as well as the XTI controller. We pass into an endless working cycle. First, we wait until the end of the playback of the previous note. We check the code of a pressed key and start playing the note. Separate tracks are played for keys 8 and 9. And in order for the notes to be reproduced, you need to generate them. This is done on the fly with a sign table compilation. The number of points is calculated from the specified frequency, now in the update period of timer 1. When in the loop, the array is filled in such a way as to stretch the sinusoid in time for its full to be period. We also stretch it in amplitude by the size of a reload register. Starting a DMA channel means a starting playback of a sine wave. To stop playback, stop the DMA channel and PWM timer 1 output. To play a note, specify its frequency and duration. To play a track of notes, specify the music array. You set the duration of a whole note and play the track in a loop. Interrupt for timer 3 stops playing the sine wave and disables the timer itself. It is convenient to see the operation of a timer 4 interrupt in the diagram. Power the horizontal lines of the keyboard one by one. The one time of each line is 100 milliseconds. By coincidence event, increment the line number. It is convenient to see how the XTI interrupt works in the diagram. Pressing the key triggers a rising each interrupt. Stop timer 4 and find out the XTI line number. This is the horizontal line of a keyboard. We get the number of a line on which timer for stopped. 
This is the vertical line of a keyboard. We set the code of a pressed symbol. When the key is released, an interrupt is triggered on the falling edge. Start timer for and reset the character code. That's all. See you in the next video. Subscribe, MicroCat.